of the most well-respected forecast entities when it comes to tropical forecasting has increased their numbers for the 2023 hurricane season. What's going on, guys? I'm certified meteorologist Jonathan Kegis. In this video, we're going to talk about a Colorado State University. If you follow tropical meteorology, you know about them. They have increased their forecast again. They did it in June from April, and they've done it again from July from June. We're going to break all of that down. We're also going to have an update on El Nino. That continues to come on strong, so it's kind of weird that they would up update their forecast like that and upgrade that forecast, but I'm going to show you why in a second, and then we're going to take a look at where we stand so far this season and where we could be headed towards the end of the video. So again, stick around for that. Before we get into the video, if you do want to stay updated on all things weather, as we are in hurricane season, you have to hit subscribe. Please do that. Hit that alert bell as well, and you'll be notified anytime we post new content. All right. So here is the update here from Colorado State University. This is released on July 6th. They're going to release their next one early in August, right before the peak of hurricane season. You see the update. It's significant. Their initial call for 13 name storms, six hurricanes, two majors. Now in June, they upped their forecast again to 15, 7, and 2. Now with the July update, they cranked it up to 18 name storms. Nine of those becoming hurricanes, with four of those becoming major, which is Category 3 or above. Now, these numbers do include the four storms that we've already had this season. The unnamed storm back in January, and then, of course, Arlene, Brett, and Cindy, all tropical systems. So they're expecting 14 more on top of what we had, but that is still significant. Mention the El Nino. It is coming in hot. It is strong. The anomalies continue to increase, and you clearly see that we have the El Nino here. We're specifically focused on the Nino 3.4 region out here, but you see the temperature anomalies, the yellow and orange there, representing where we have way above normal sea surface temperatures on the equatorial Pacific. And again, it's that warming water there that tends to suppress the Atlantic hurricane season because typically as a result, we have increased wind shear in the tropical Atlantic. Again, the calling card for El Nino there is the warmer waters over the equatorial Pacific. It then causes air to rise over the eastern Pacific. We typically have a much busier Pacific hurricane season on the eastern Pacific than what we do in the Atlantic. The, one of the reasons for that is because we're increasing the wind shear, the subtropical jet stream, very active. Hurricanes, tropical systems, again, do not like wind shear. When they try to develop, when they try to take advantage of the warm ocean waters, they get knocked over really quick. It's just like when you're kind of wrestling with somebody, you stand up and you get right knocked, knocked back down again. So again, they do not like the wind shear. Typically with El Nino, we do have the increased wind shear, which limits as a whole tropical development. Now remember, we always talk about this. It only takes one even in El Nino years, we have had bad hurricanes. Think Hurricane Andrew back in 1992. So if there's that window for systems to develop, they will do that. One of the reasons why, though, they have increased their forecast. And they did mention when they released the forecast that, that numbers, those numbers would be even more aggressive had it not be for El Nino coming in hot. And we're likely going to have a strong El Nino by the peak of hurricane season. It's because of the extremely warm Atlantic. We are in record territory across a lot of the Atlantic base. I mean, just look at some of these numbers. It's at 86 around the Bahamas. I mean, we're in the mid to upper 80s across here, even in the subtropics. We're in the upper 70s right now, near 80. So just crazy, crazy warm out in the Atlantic. It's one of the reasons why we were able to get Arlene and certainly Brett and Cindy so early, of course, we've talked about the lack of Saharan dust out there uh, in the short term in June, which allow that to happen as well. So there's a lot going on out there. But the reason for the very aggressive forecast increase from Colorado State is because of what you see right there. The insanely warm Atlantic Ocean water temperatures. Again, if we can get storms going, if we can bypass that wind shear a little bit, those storms are going to be able to grow and thrive. So where we stand right now, of course, we've had the three name systems. It's technically four, but we're not going to get a name on that first one that was kind of detected late. It was found that there was actually a subtropical storm in January. We've talked all about that, so we won't get too much into it. But there's technically been four storms already. The next name storm would be Dawn. Again, there's nothing brewing as of July 6th. In terms of the energy these storms produce, there's a metric we, we use called ACE, accumulated cyclone energy. 
basically once a storm gets named, it starts to generate ace and does so while it's a tropical storm or hurricane, the more intense the storm, the longer the storm is active, the more ace it generates. And then you add all the ones that add all the ace up per storm to get where you are in the, to the season. 2023 to date, again, already off to a fast start. We're at 9.8 in that number. The average to date through July 6th is 3.1. So we are way ahead of schedule already on that. And again, Colorado State now forecasting 14 more. It gets even crazier when I show you this. This is the climatological graph, if you will, of tropical frequency. When we get tropical storms and hurricanes, the peak isn't until September 10th. So obviously we have a long way to go. Right now we are in, climatologically speaking anyway, again, it doesn't always happen like this, but we are in the quietest stretch of the official hurricane season, at least rivals the end of November. But you see that we're in that little dip through the first few days of July. We stay pretty quiet again, typically, not always, through the middle of July. And then once we get into August, because we've been warming the oceans up, we, we get deeper into summer, we start to get the atmosphere a little more primed, some of that dust goes away, and then you see it go gangbusters here, really through August, and then of course into September before we start to back things off a little bit. As we get into the first part of October, we had the other little peak there that secondary peak later in October before we see that drastic decrease in tropical development. So a couple of things to watch here. We highlighted this earlier in a few earlier videos here before the season even started that there was going to be this battle. Who wins? The great limiting factor in the increased wind shear from El Nino or the ridiculously, insanely hot Atlantic Ocean temperatures that fuel these storms. It remains to be seen. Colorado State seems to think that the water temperature is end up going to to win out but i will say if we do get that strong el nino quick enough it is, it is going to help us out a little bit but so far again there is kind of almost record low wind shear in june which again helped brett and cindy kind of get going out there colorado state university will come up with another update in early august mentioned that earlier in this video noah will also have their mid-season outlook coming up in august as well they do that right before again the peak of hurricane season it's like more than 80 percent of all storms develop by the second half of august into september and early october that is your climatological peak so they're going to have an update on there as we continue to watch the atlantic get super super warm and then that equatorial pacific gets super warm as el nino continues to come on fast thank you guys so much for tuning in again if you found this content helpful give it a thumbs up Certainly hit subscribe if you want to stay updated on all things hurricane season, all things weather this season. Again, if you hit that alert bell, it will let you know anytime we post new content. Post in the comments where you're tuning in from, and we will catch you next time.